I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know. see his loving care and though my heart grows weary I never will despair <clears throat> I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast the day of his appearing will come at last he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find him. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. God that he is alive. Yeah. He is living and he is alive. Amen. All right. All other founders of their own religions are still in the grave, but you won't find Jesus' body anywhere. You won't find it anywhere, bless God, because he is alive. All right. Because that we are alive and lifted up, let's also sing Love Lifted Me. All right, open up your red hymnals. We're going to sing Love Lifted Me at page 441, please. 441. Resurrected and alive, so his love lifts us up. Amen. 441 in your red hymnal, please. Look above. Jesus completely stays. He will lift you by his love out of the angry ways. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. Please stand. Please stand. All right, open up your red hymnals to Christ Arose, 138. Oh, amen. 138. 
uh, just let me know if you can play that one, brother. If not, then uh, we'll sing with, uh, a different song. 138. All righty. All right. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ arose. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foe. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose. With a mighty triumph for his foe, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Amen. He arose. Brother Ralph, will you open up the service with a word of prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day, Lord. What a day to be saved. Yes, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing me here, Lord God, all of us here, Lord God. Thank you so much for the fellowship of the saints, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, please forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Yes, amen. We're truly committed, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, please, Lord, let your Holy Spirit just roam around here freely, Lord. Yes, we need you. Amen. Okay, you may be seated, please. You may be seated. All right, take out your white hymnal. And uh, we'll sing page uh, 78. We'll sing page 78. I think you're able to play that one. Uh, I don't remember. We sang it together, but page 78. All right, then. I'm going to go at my pace. I'm going to go at my pace. All right. Page 78 in your white hymnal. Heaven's Jubilee. Oh, nice. All right. Death does not have to be the end for you. Because of his resurrection, we have life eternal up in glory. It will be a jubilee. Here we go. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah. 
When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies, Seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be All the living saints to fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, in the Holy Ghost how the hands will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Bam! Amen. All right, if our announcer will come forward. Yes, sir. Okay. Praise the Lord, amen. It's a good day. It's a good day today. I know this is really filled out, but I'm going to pass it around. Anyway. This is our volunteer sheet. Here you go, brother. Pass it around. For anybody who wants to volunteer and help the church, I'm sorry I don't have a pen with me today, but anybody who wants to volunteer for the church can sign up to these uh, volunteer sheet, through the volunteer sheet. Thank you all for your help. I know many of you are very, very faithful and uh, very reliable when it comes to helping out with the church, so I really appreciate that. So uh, people who are on kitchen duty, we already know. Um, it's going to be Sonia, Sister Jenny, and Brother Chris. Unfortunately, he's not here today, but that's all right. We have people for kitchen duty, and remember, folks... Um, Please take your leftovers home if, if there are any leftovers. We try to eat it all, but sometimes we can't. Sometimes our, our gullets just can't handle it. So <laughs> please uh, take, some, take your leftovers home if you can. Um, and also kitchen duty does involve, if you're not bringing food, I mean, if you're helping prepare the food, you must also clean up. So thank you always for helping us, with, helping us out with that. So um, have our newcomer cards. Brother Rob, if you, if you got a hand uh, I don't know. I think we have some newcomers. If you're new to our church, would you please mind uh, raising your hand so we can pray for you and, you know, we just get your con contact information and uh, just in case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got some newcomers here. Thank you so much. Um, that's just for just just so we can uh, keep in contact with you and pray for you if need be. So God bless all of you for showing up today. I mean, we have a lot of new faces, so God bless you all for coming. Many. I say this every week, but seriously, you can be so many other places Sunday morning and uh, you decided to show up here. So praise you, praise the Lord for that. Uh, so next week, actually, we're having fellowship, and it's going to be at my place. So if you want to attend, let me know. I will give you the address, but I will not broadcast it on, on the Internet. I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> but I will not broadcast it out on the Internet. Uh, those of you who have been praying for my college acceptance, thank you because the Lord has worked mightily in my life. So I got him where I needed to go. So praise the Lord for that. I got in where I needed to go. That way I can keep coming to church and I don't have to go like a billion miles away somewhere else. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, we had visitation this morning. We had an interesting crowd today. Um, next week we're going to have street preaching, as is the custom of this church. Next week, uh, street preaching at 10 a.m. We're going to meet at this place called Nandy's Barbecue. There's like an open parking lot because the restaurant doesn't open until like 3 p.m. So that's where we meet up every week. Uh, this week, so last week we finished Romans chapter 10. Now we're going over to Galatians. So our memory verses are going to be Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. You know, you'd be really surprised if you just memorize two verses every week. In the course of a year, you will memorize a lot of things. I mean, Romans chapter 10 on its own just had a lot of verses. So if you just keep up with it, brother, brethren, you'll make some good progress. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. The Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So commit those to memory. I really like the first verse, because Christ hath made us free from sin. We don't have to succumb to that, you know, our sins anymore. So that's awesome. So now I'm going to ask uh, Sister Joyce to come up and sing us a special. Um, Brother Amen. Brent is going to be our piano you, player. Give him the glory.
Starting next Sunday, she will be doing the song leading for us. <laughs> All right, we're going to take up the Lord's offering. I would like to ask Brother Stan and Brother Emilio to come forward. Brother Stan and Brother Emilio to come forward. Take up the Lord's offering for us. I would like to ask Brother Stan to open up the service with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for salvation to your blood yes. of your son Jesus. Lord, thank you so much for loving us enough and giving us everything we need. Lord, That's thank good. you so much for uh, all your blessings that everything for you have given to us. And Lord, please let us give cheerfully back to you, back a small portion that you have given us already. And remind us that everything we have, it's not ours, it's yours. And That's good. we yeah. should use everything, money, everything, for your glory and mm -hmm. for your interest, Lord. Please uh, bless this uh, sermon and lift the pastor with the Holy Ghost and let him you, preach boldly and without any hesitation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 <coughs> Okay, so um, thank you so much for coming to San Jose Bible Baptist Church. For those of you uh, who have kids and you feel like that you want to take them to a room if at a moment they're a little shaky, uh, we have a big room next door. It's bigger than even this room, actually. So uh, if there's also a box full of toys. Just ask one of our brothers at the back over there. They'll be standing at the wall over there. If you feel like that you want to go to that room, go to one of them and they'll take you to the room next door, okay? Uh, they'll take you to the room next door. If you can find it yourself, it shouldn't be difficult to find. It's over on the side over there. You can go over there yourself. In the meantime, I hope that you'll enjoy today's sermon. Please open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want you to also go to Acts chapter 12, please. Acts chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 5. At this day, this is like one of the only two holidays where the world will finally start to think about Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to take advantage of this day and preach you a sermon that might relate to the season. And I hope that the sermon will be a blessing to you and that the Lord will speak to your heart. Acts chapter 12 and then your second hand to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, please. 1 Corinthians 5 and Acts chapter 12. All right, we're going to start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So notice that Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb, and we are to represent as unleavened bread. 
Now look at Acts chapter 12, please. Acts chapter 12. We'll read verse 3. Well, we'll start off at verse 1 for better context. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now notice that during the days of unleavened bread, this pagan king, he vexed and persecuted some people in the church. And notice that he intended to slay Peter after Easter. Easter, as you may all know, has its historical roots to Catholicism and paganism. I thought that Easter was a Christian day. Well, you thought a little bit wrongly, my friend. Easter, you gotta understand, it came from the from a goddess Ishtar, and it also the eggs and the bunny during the time of spring was supposed to represent fertility, something sexual and dark, and even as dark as well. As a matter of fact, if you study nearly all goddesses during pagan culture, their focus was concerning something sexual fertility, like they're a mother role. So later on, if you know your history, the Catholic Church, because they borrowed so many of paganism within Christianity, that's why they took Easter with them, and then they combined the paganism with their Christianity. However, we Bible-believing Christians, it doesn't mean that we dismiss it altogether. We like to take that day and to use it as an occasion, as an opportunity to warm people's hearts to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. How so, Pastor? Because unfortunately, Easter is like the only day when people will start to think about Jesus Christ raising himself from the dead. Yeah, come on. You tell them that every time you go street preaching, they'll think you're crazy. Yeah. You tell it during Easter, that's when they start to think about it, and you don't even need to say that to yeah. them. Yeah, that's right. They know when they, uh, they know that the day is Easter, and, they'll think, and they know about Jesus' resurrection. So because of that, I'm going to take opportunity of it. I, I don't say Easter. I'll only say it if I have to. More, more often, I would like to say Happy Resurrection Day to you. I would like to say that one. But I'm going to use it just for convenience sake here and there. But today, I would like to preach to you, rather than observing the pagan parts of Easter, but thinking about our Passover lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. It was during those days when the Lord Jesus Christ gave up his life, shed his precious blood, died on the old rugged cross so that he can redeem and save all of mankind. And it was by his death, he was able to produce life. And that just, it's like the Lord just rubbed dirt on Ishtar. And he said, I'll show you death and life out of that. I'll show you the new birth out of that. And then the Lord Jesus Christ, he raised himself from the dead and offered you all new life. Yeah, praise the, Lord. the new birth in Jesus Christ. So today, my sermon today is the Easter bunny or the Passover lamb. Yeah. Let's pray. Amen. God, my Father, I pray that you'll please fill within me your Holy Spirit. And all I need is you, Lord. And I pray that you'll wash away my sins with your blood. And I pray that you'll mold and use me and that today's sermon will be a blessing to the people rather than a burden. If anyone is lost here, I pray that today will be the day of their salvation. God, I need love. I need wisdom. I need guidance. I need you. That is all that I need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing that we've got to understand in order to have resurrection in life, you've got to understand this first. Something must die. Something must be non-existent. It should not have been alive to begin with. That way we can properly say birth. We can properly say resurrect. So you got to understand this. If you want to receive life from God, if you want to receive liveliness and resurrection in your life, something must die. I think a lot of people don't think about that. We want the power. We want the resurrection. We want eternal life. But we don't think about the price first. We don't think about the cost first. We don't think about death. 
You can't just get a handout without somebody paying the price for you. Didn't you know that Christianity, that we are supposed to die daily? Paul said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Galatians chapter 2, Paul said, I am, present tense, crucified with Christ. Why? Nevertheless, I live. So in order to raise ourselves into new life, resurrect, we must realize that we must die first. Something must die first so that we can receive life and resurrection. So the first thing that I'm going to say that must die is your sin. Amen. I'll take your silence that I'm trying to kick somebody else's sin right here. If you want to have resurrection in your life, you want to have a liveliness in your Christian life, you got to realize this. Sin must die. And you got to realize that with your wickedness, that the world that you're messing around with and the bad habits of the flesh that you keep yielding into, those things must die if you want to be a resurrected, you want to be a lively Christian. Are you alive today in the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you honestly say that your Christian life is alive? Well, I feel, uh, I feel dead. I feel just nothing. I don't feel like I have any life within me. Well, it's because you're still messing around with your flesh, with the world, and with sin. And you got to realize that sin must be crucified. Some of you are still messing around with something that has to do with drugs or with sex. You spend too much time watching the wrong things on television, on the internet. You're playing the games that you shouldn't be playing. Kids, millennials, and 30-year-olds, and 40-year-olds, and 50-year-olds are still stuck in that. You are still playing with games on the internet, with your PlayStation, with all your little games. And then you have your iPhone now, and everyone's playing with that thing. And you're playing with things that that is considered to be sin and that is wrong and you become an addict to it come on. Yeah, come on. and some of you are still messing around with the Facebook and then YouTube and then WhatsApp and that kind of stuff nothing wrong with social networks but then if we were to look at your platform at your profile what would we what would we see in your activity what would we see in your pictures and some of you Bible-believing Christians who've been attending this church for years, you still didn't clean up that junk yet. And if they know that you attend our church, and then they, you got sin in your profile, you better repent and get that right with God, and you can't even preach on this pulpit. Amen. Amen. You better clean that up. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm touching something. That's good. I'm touching something here. That's good. You got to realize this, that sin is not allowed. Sin cannot be used for the glory of God. You think you glorify God when you corrupted your hands and your eyes and your mouth and your feet and then you came to church? No, you brought in a smelly, stinky, corrupted sacrifice to God today. You better clean up your sin. You better repent and get right with God. Some of you are still listening to that contemporary music. Some of you are still messing around, dressed in the way that you should not dress. And some of you aren't dressing properly. Some of you are still messing around with that cuss word language and then the bad habit that you keep saying. The same old jokes, the same old company that's been wrongly influencing you and you know you should distance yourself from them. And you better repent and get that right with God. Man, Pastor, I didn't come to church for this. Well, happy Resurrection Day to you. I'm trying to preach life into you. You might say, why? Because something in you must die if I'm going to get life out of you. Do you want God to start answering your prayers, finally? Do you want God to start blessing your life, finally? You ever wondered why your Christian life is always dull and it's not live? Simple. You didn't kill something yet. You didn't kill sin in your life. And if you won't kill sin, sin will kill you. That's why your Christian life is dying. That's why your spiritual walk is getting murdered bit by bit. Why? Because something has to give. Something has to die. You can't have both. You cannot serve God and mammon with two masters. You cannot soul win while you're messing around with sin. You cannot pray when you're messing around with fornication. You cannot read your Bible when you still cuss. You cannot do soul winning. You cannot come to church. You cannot live clean for God when you're living your life in sin. 
You, you think that's what God wants in heaven? Uh, you know, uh, do all kinds of good works and righteous things for me, but then those sins that you still have a habit of doing, it's okay, I'll overlook it. That's what 99% of religions think. Right. My good works will get me into heaven. Do you think, my friend, that by living a good life, you'll go to heaven? Do you think that by coming to church, you'll go to heaven? Do you think that getting baptized, and do you think that keeping the commandments, living by the golden rule, doing so much things for humanity by feeding the poor and saving the environment and giving money to charity and to universities to help out some people who are struggling, you think that that will do you any good? My friend, no, those things won't. And that's why 99% of people think that they can go to heaven because overall, they are pretty much a good person. But the Bible says all our righteousness are as filthy rags. My friend, I'm so glad you came to church today, but coming to this church will never get you to heaven. Amen. Let me tell you something else. Believing all the stuff that I teach and preach to you does not get you to heaven. Just because you agree with the teachings that we stand upon doesn't mean that you go to heaven that way. Amen. Oh, so you're saying that by being an independent, fundamental, Baptist, King James only, dispensational, I could be 100% like you and then I can go to hell. Absolutely, my friend. You can go to hell and burn for all eternity. You might say, well, then what is my salvation? Your salvation is Jesus Christ. What, if you think that what you do counts for your salvation, why did Jesus even have to die for you? He died to give you eternal life because you cannot earn eternal life by yourself. So you might say, okay then, Pastor, how do I get saved? How do I get eternal life? All you have to do, my friend, is remember, sin kills you. Sin sends you to hell. So all you have to do is that when you repent as a sinner, you don't do anything about it yourself. You don't clean up all your life, clean up all your sin, start doing good things, and fulfill every jot and tittle in helping out the church, this particular church even. No, it's not by doing that. When you repent as a sinner, all you do is say to Jesus Christ, I can't do anything, Father, because I'm too rotten to begin with anyway, and my good works don't even count a bit. All I can do is trust and rely on what you did on the cross to save me. Because only what he did on the cross saves you. That easy, Pastor? That easy. Sounds too simple. My friend, God says a childlike faith. It's that simple. The Bible says... Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Well, that sounds too simple. Well, that's Bible. I don't care what you think. I care what God that's thinks. Right. God says that's how you get saved. You can take it or leave it. You know, it's very, it's so, it's so amazing that people do not want to go to heaven. People reject eternal life when God made it easy for you to earn eternal life. You got to realize this is that Jesus Christ paid it all for you. So won't you today, today would be a great time that you receive the Lord Jesus Christ That's for right. your salvation. Amen. Won't you do it today, friend? Well, if you are a saved Christian already, if you did receive Jesus Christ for your salvation, then you better realize this. You better realize that if you're going to live your life as a resurrected, lively Christian, you better clean up your sin. Amen, you better clean up your sin. You can't keep messing around with God. You think you can keep messing around with God by coming on the altar and saying, oh, forgive me? No, that's not how it works. You know what repent is? Repent is change of mind. That's what repent is. It's a change of mind. It's not just seeking forgiveness. Anyone can say, I'm sorry, and then beg for forgiveness. No, there's got to be a change of attitude, a change of heart about your sinful condition. You better say, Lord, I repent. And when you repent... You better do good works for that. You better say, okay, I'm going to live clean. I'm going to avoid sin. I'm going to start doing what's right. You better start doing good works. Not for your salvation. Salvation is only trusting what Jesus did on the cross for you. When you're a saved Christian, you better start doing good works. Amen. And believing Jesus died on the cross for you ain't going to do you a bit of good when you're a saved Christian. You better start doing good works. You better start living for Jesus Christ. You better clean up your sin. What sin are you messing around with? Those must die in order for Jesus Christ to resurrect within you. In order for God to finally answer your prayers, for God to finally bless you. But you know, see, you're still in between, and that's why God, in His dealing with you, is in between. Oh, that's good. 
He can't give you the full outpouring of his showers, the blessings, until you say, God, I'm not messing around anymore. I repent. I get right with you. You know where Jesus died on the cross? You know what he did? He took your sins. So why don't you just nail it to the cross, huh? Take that sin, hammer it to the cross, let it die. Let the blood of Jesus wash it away. Walk away from Golgotha's hill and don't look back and let the old rugged cross bear your sins and take it away and take it away. Don't turn back. Why do you go back to the filth? Why do you go back to the God? Why do you still mess around, gamble, play, and say, oh, you know what? Pastor's not going to get me. The brethren are not going to get me. And see, that's the problem is that you abuse the charity and the love of this church so that you can still mess around with sin. Repent of your fornication. Repent of your alcohol. Repent of your cigarettes. Repent of the garbage that you're watching online. Repent of the music that you're listening to. Repent of the garments that you're wearing. Repent and get right with God. How long has it been, huh? That's why you cannot be a Christian who's alive. You cannot be a lively Christian. There's another thing that must die. That's another thing that must die, you got to realize, is your flesh. You might say, wow, really, Pastor? Absolutely. You got to realize this, is that when people go through suffering and trials and temptations, people get depressed. People get discouraged and they say, man, I messed up again. Oh, man, it's so hard to serve God. Your finances are getting lower. Your family, you're trying to make ends meet to pay all the bills and feed all those mouths. You're trying to make a living. You're working so hard at your job. Some of you are doing two jobs. Some of you are working so hard at school, trying to make good grades so that you can make a living. Some of you are suffering health problems, and that's why some people in our church can't come to church again because of the toll in their health. Some of them are sick. Some of you are getting older, and age is getting on to you. And you're getting discouraged, and you feel like that the Lord... He's not being there for you to help you with your problem. But my friend, that is exactly what must happen. God is exactly doing the right thing with you. He is doing everything as a perfect job. Where you are right now with everything dying out is where you ought to be. And you got to say, why do you say that, preacher? Because in order to receive the resurrection, something must die. Amen. Do you know how you get the filling power of the Holy Spirit? Do you know where you get the mighty blessing of God? Do you know where you get the touch of God on your life and he starts to do miracles and great things with you? When your flesh dies. Until this flesh dies, then the Lord can start using you. But because you will not die, that's why the Lord cannot use you. You got every... All of you want to have a perfect job, a perfect life, enough money. You want to have everything perfect. But let me tell you something, friend, is that you have everything perfect, then you're in the wrong. That's good, you're, you are in the wrong. God's not going to do great things with you. So you should be happy if some of you are struggling with something right now. Amen. Oh, temptation is taking a toll on me. I'm struggling with the same things. Praise the Lord. Oh, the trial is so hard to fight and I'm trying to bear it. Praise the Lord. Oh, God, I'm suffering so much pain and praise the Lord because in order for God to mightily use you, your flesh must die. Amen. You know why? You know what's going on? Financial problems. Work problems. Family problems. Marriage problems. All kinds of problems going on. You know what's going on right now? You know what God's doing? He's taking a hammer and a nail and then he's just nailing it to the cross. That's what's going on. And he's just nailing it down and nailing it down. And every time that nail sinks in your flesh, you go, oh, God, it hurts. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, the thorn that's in my flesh, it's got to sink deeper. That nail's got to sink deeper because this flesh needs to be crucified. It needs to be killed so that the spiritual nature within you can become more alive. The more that this flesh is comfortable, the more that you try to have situation and things that pleases your flesh, the more you will be focusing on the things of the flesh rather than the things of the spirit. You know when you start to think about more of the things of the Spirit? When something bad happens to you? No, no, I don't, Pastor. Oh, yeah. When's the last time you prayed to God for a long time? 
when something bad was happening to your household, huh? Did you, had, did you pray that long when everything was going great in your household and then life was perfect? No, you just became more lazy. That's what happened. You became more fleshy. That's what happened. You try to find more things to satisfy and please his flesh. That's what happened when everything was going perfect. But then when God started to take away things in your life, that's when you finally fell on your knees and then you wept in tears and folded your hands and bowed your head and prayed to the Lord finally. Maybe that's why it's good. You know why? God's trying to get your attention. If God cannot get your attention when you have good things in your life, God's going to get your attention when he takes away the good things out of your life. Yeah, that's right. You must crucify and carry your cross. Oh, it's so hard to sacrifice my job, my family, my comforts. It's hard, my friend, but Jesus Christ said, take up your cross and follow me. Why? So that you can have more abundance of life, he said. Life and resurrection is found when something is dead. Why don't you have the Passover lamb in your life? Because we are supposed to be unleavened bread. Like Jesus Christ, the Passover. Won't you assimilate yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and join him on the cross and crucify yourself to the things of this world? Don't be discouraged, my friend. Keep it up. Keep lifting up your eyes to heaven. Keep looking at God. Because the reason why is you must go down so that you can go up one day. Your flesh must die. Be buried so that you can get resurrected with him. Things of this world must die. So don't be gloomy when things go bad. Be happy when things go bad discouragement and depression, you look at those things at the face and say, you're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to take away my joy. I'm going to find the joy of the Lord within me because the fleshy things are dying out. So when depression starts to whine, discouragement starts to whine, when the fleshy things are dying out, you tell depression, you tell discouragement, that is so good that my flesh died out. Aren't you happy, depression? Aren't you happy, discouragement? You get on those things. You get on your flesh. Let those things die out and be bathed underneath the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know what your health problem is, but remember this. You're going to better glorify God after that. Yeah. I don't know what your financial problem is, but remember this. You're going to get out of that tomb real soon. I don't know what your family problems are, but remember this, God's going to breathe life into you and you're going to be resurrected with him. Another thing that must die out is this wicked world. This wicked world. Mankind, you see all of them trying to pull in their best efforts to make this world a better place for all of us to live in. Education is going to progress. Technology is going to progress. And that we're, going to do, we're going to do a lot of humanitarian acts. Let's all tolerate each other's religious differences and beliefs. And let's all unite as one. Let's, let's try to make this world a better place. But no matter how hard mankind tries to make this world a better place, you got to realize this, is that, see, they don't want to die. They don't want to let the things of sin and the world and the flesh die in order to retain life. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Do you want to make this world a better place? Okay, do you know how to make this world a better place? To make this world a better place, the world, the flesh, and the devil, the things of sin, must die. That's how you make this world a better place. Yeah, that's right. not, not better education, not a better government system, not better politics, it's not better technology, it's not by a more advanced civilization. Every time technology progresses, we worry more about our kids spending time on the screen. That's right. Amen. Back then, when there was no screen, they had, and there were none of the smoke in buildings, they had nothing but the creation of God. That's, right. That's when they can start focusing on Jesus Christ, when they're not caught with the hustle and bustle of the system of America, the system of this world, of this Amen. advanced civilization. We're too busy with school. We're too busy with work. We're too busy with uh, this. And then when we go at home, we crash. And then we just want to watch TV and play games and mess around with the Internet. You see what this world has done with this yeah. advanced technology and education? It got your eyes away from Jesus Christ. Amen. Why else didn't you? Why else did you skip church? I'll tell you why you skip church. I'm too busy. With what, huh? What kept you busy? It was technology, huh? It was school, huh? 
It was the, the way that this government has programmed you, huh? It's a technology, huh? That's why you're too busy. But think about it. Back in the biblical days, they didn't have that. What do you think they did? It was just them and the book. How about that? So the things of this world must die out so that you can re have resurrected life in Jesus Christ. This world, you know what they want to do? They want to retain their sin. Mm -hmm. Let's keep all these different religions together and let's keep all these different, uh, we're going to make like 10 to 12 different kinds of sex and genders and then all kinds of different right, orientations yeah. right here. Right. Let's uh, maintain all the differences of uh, morals right here. You have your own moral, I have my own moral. That's, hey, when you have that kind of a world, you can't keep that and have a resurrected, lively world. They want to make the world lively and resurrected, but if you keep those things, do you think that you're going to have a resurrected, lively world? Never going to happen. And I don't care how much money you pay with your taxes, and I don't care how much sweat that you break out, and how much hours you spend on humanitarian acts, building bigger buildings, trying to help out the government. That's good. All your efforts are futile, it's in vain, it's worthless, it's not going to do any good for you when you keep your sin. Right. Amen. Until you say, this is wrong, and I submit to your authority, God. Until you start coming to church like you ought to, Amen. reading the Bible like you ought to, throwing away the sin that you're supposed to throw away. Reject the wrong religions, reject the wrong beliefs. Reject the, the false science that is going on in schools, not the real science. Mm -hmm. As taught from the word of God. Until you reject those things. Then the Lord can start making the world a better place. But see, it ain't going to happen. So you know what God's going to do? God's going to let the world die out. It's going to get worse. That's right. Let, let's rescue the environment. You're not going to rescue the environment. That's it's right. going to get worse. And what's going to happen is God's just waiting for the world to blow up. Because he knows that by their efforts, their way of doing things is not going to improve the world. No, we've been seeing a lot of strides and progress with Barack Obama. That's right. The Lord's going to send some kind of savior and antichrist who will give those kind of promises and give you a false belief that we're making strides, we're making progress. He's going to, the antichrist will fool you. Why? Because the devil did the same way with the past presidents of the United States. Right. He fooled you real good. You all praise and you adore them. But, and when the antichrist comes, you're not going to see a difference. That's right. The Antichrist is going to be better than Barack Obama. Yeah. The Antichrist is going to be way better than Billy Graham. The Antichrist will do a smoother and a better job yeah. than Pope Francis. He's going to be so cunning. He's going to be so liberal, so tolerant. He's going to be a perfect person that's going to fit your beliefs, and we're all going to make this world a better place. Wow, that's the Antichrist? Yeah. Well, isn't that the kind of world we're living in? Absolutely. That's what they want, a person that fits with their belief. A person who's really tolerant. A person who wants to save the world through humanitarian acts. Are you going to follow the Antichrist system now? I wonder. Hmm. I wonder. So you got to realize this, this world, when it gets worse and worse and worse, you know what we Bible believers do? We don't panic about who's going to be the next president of the United States. We don't worry about what's going on in the voting process. And we don't worry about the conspiracies either. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Because God said, I'm just waiting for the world to blow up and I'm going to rapture you out of there. Amen. And I'm going to set up my kingdom and clean up the mess for you. You know what churches are doing? Churches are trying to bring in the kingdom. That's right. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how much work you pull in church, you'll never bring in the kingdom. You know, right? you know why? The Bible already prophesied the, anti the Antichrist will rule all over the world. So what do you think your kingdom's going to do, huh? That's right. Not going to do anything. You need the king of kings to come to set up the right kingdom, Amen. to set everything in order. And trust me, he's going to kill everything that's preventing resurrection and life inside this world. He's going to kill sin. He's going to kill kill all the false doctrines, the false religions, and all the false systems of this world, and set up his own kingdom, his own righteousness, his own way of doing things. And he's going to set everything in order. So you know what should happen when you see the next news report about 50 people died, another gun mass shooting, oh, another car accident, oh, wildfire that spread, oh, a hurricane, oh, guess who's in office again? And you know what we do when we see those news? I'll tell you what you should be doing. You should 
shut off CNN and open the KJV. That's what you should be reading. It's not FOX, it's not CNN, it's not NBC, it's a KJV that you gotta be looking at. You better be looking at this one because this is what's giving you life. And when the world gets worse and worse and worse, you know what happens? Resurrection is coming even closer. Resurrection becomes stronger. Resurrection becomes brighter. Because as the world becomes worse, and finally when it hits the worst day with the Antichrist, that's when God has to sound his rapture horn. Oh man, it's so sad. Oh man, it's so bad. Oh, I'm worried what's going to happen. No, I don't. I just say, praise the Lord. The rapture's getting closer. I thank God for people in this church who rejoice and shout when the world is getting worse and worse and worse, and they're saying, praise the Lord. The rapture's even closer now. I thank God the members are saying, maybe the rapture's going to happen this year. And I've got some fanatics that are saying, the rapture has to happen now. It's got to happen now. <laughs> Obama is definitely the Antichrist. So it has to happen sometime within three years, you know. That's the kind of spirit we should have is that, that hope for the rapture that's yeah, that strong and it's that close. Obviously, I'm not saying Obama is the Antichrist. But, man, I'm telling you what. I'm telling you this is that when the days are getting worse and worse and worse, I like it when we have the spirit that this rapture is going to happen any moment now. It's coming real soon. What's going to prevent the rapture, man? What's going to hold the Lord back? I mean, the world's going to hell. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Lord, didn't we hit the worst already? So shouldn't you sound the rapture horn? Maybe we're not at the worst yet. Maybe we're not at the worst yet. So we should get even more happy when more worse things start happening, maybe. That way the rapture can start even closer. The rapture can sound right now. The Lord will give you resurrection when this world dies out. So that's why, you know, you should be rejoicing. So you know what causes the rapture? You know what causes God's millennial kingdom? When the kingdoms of this world die out. When the kingdoms of this world die. When they are sacrificed. The Bible says it's going to be a big sacrifice at Basra. That's what he says at the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel. It's going to be like a big sacrifice. It's dead. And by that, then God can resurrect a new kingdom on this earth. Another thing you got to understand for us to attain life and something must die, it also must be, now listen to this, okay? You might be kind of surprised to hear this, but this is very true. It must be the church. Now you might say, why is that, Pastor? Here's one thing you got to understand. The church will remain all the way to the rapture, but that doesn't mean the church will land triumphant at the end of this day and age, that the church will get better and better. No, the church will become worse and worse, you got to understand. Amen. You might say, really, the church is going to get worse and worse, Pastor? Absolutely. It will become worse and worse. You know why people come to church? Okay, so let me open your eyes a bit right here, okay? Why did you come to church today, huh? You came to church today because you want to serve God? Because you love Jesus Christ? Why did you come to this particular day when you, you could have went to church the past Sundays? Where were you, huh, that Sunday? Come on. That's Watching good. the Super Bowl? That's good. That's good. Why are you sleeping the Sunday away? Oh, too busy and too tired so you can't go to church? What happened to you back then? See, that's why churches have fallen into apostasy. You know why? Because there are people today who don't want to serve God in church. You know what motivates them to come to church? Bring 10 people to church and one of you will win a free flat screen TV. I kid you not. You know how you get buses full with kids? There's a $5 bill underneath one of those seats. That'll motivate the kids to come and fill up the church. That's why churches get filled out. Why? Because there's always a gimmick and handout. I don't like Pastor Kim's church. The sermon that he preached today hurt my feelings. I want to go to a church where the pastor says nice things that makes me feel good. Because I'm so tired, I'm so bummed out, I need something that will encourage me, motivate me. Why do you think Joel Osteen's church is so big? Amen. See that? The churches will fall into apostasy. Why? Because people want to hear nice things, something that will make them feel good. Not something where they have to feel the pain, where they have to kick sin and kill the things of this flesh. No, they want to keep their sin. They want to keep the world and serve God. That's their problem. That's their problem. You cannot serve God and mammon, friend. You want resurrection? I'll tell you how to get resurrection. Something must die. But see, people don't want to die first. 
They just want to get the resurrection. They want to get the power. They want to get the life. They want to get the energy. They want to get the blessing from God without sacrifice, without cost, without something that must die. And you know what that is a sign of? Complete human selfishness. Even, it, come on, use your head. Even in this day and age, you're not going to get a million dollars unless you cost something, unless you pay for something, unless you work hard on something. That's why a lot of people want to go for the lottery. Why? They want, they want a handout. They want to get something that's more convenient and easier. So you got to understand that the church must die. So when the churches get worse and worse, and let's say that our church gets smaller and smaller, you know what we should be doing? Don't be sad. Don't be depressed. Say, man, praise the Lord. That means that the resurrection is happening even closer. Oh, man, pastor, it's just me and you tonight. Well, praise the Lord. The rapture might be sounding right now then, that means. That's a sign that, you know why? It's a sign that the best of the best churches is even falling. Yeah. And when the best of the best falls, then you know that the church is dying. And God's like saying, okay, I'll sound the rapture right now. Come on. Let the churches fall, because that will bring the rapture closer. Oh man, the King James Bible is not high and lifted up. We got NIV, NASV, ESV, NKJV seeping through all the churches. Praise the Lord, man then that means the resurrection is going to happen soon. Oh, man, pastors, man, they're not dressed in their Sunday best anymore. Now they're dressing up like little effeminate in tight, skinny jeans with uh, heavy necklaces. And this preacher's got a beard and long hair now like he's some hippie cool dude wearing a T-shirt. He's not preaching out of the book. He's preaching out of iPad now with the computer screen. We're not singing out of a hymn book anymore. We're all singing out of a a big flash screen TV that's posted on the wall. Oh man, it's getting worse and worse. Praise the Lord. Let it happen, man. Let it happen. Praise the Lord. That means the resurrection's coming even closer. Man, have five more mega churches over here. We'll have one next door and they'll be our best friends, man. They'll bring in the rapture even closer. They'll bring the resurrection even faster, man. Oh man, pastor, don't you get sick and angry and mad about San Francisco Bay Area? Well, yeah, but I'll be let me be honest right here. I'm actually happy. That means the resurrection's going to happen even faster. Yeah. Let, it, let it get worse. Yeah. Let it become worse. Let the churches fall apart. They're not street preaching anymore, pastor. And those who are street preaching are teaching wrong doctrine. Praise the Lord. The resurrection's going to happen even faster, man. Yeah. Man, it's not the Christians who are knocking on doors. It's the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses. Praise the Lord. Let it happen. The resurrection's going to happen even faster. Yeah. I don't see brother and sister so-and-so in church anymore. Isn't it sad, pastor? Of course. Man, don't you get a little discouraged? Of course I get very discouraged. But hey, that means the resurrection's happening even closer. Oh man, numbers have dwindled down so much smaller, pastor, today. It's because of that nasty sermon you preached at Easter Sunday, you know? <laughs> Praise the Lord, the resurrection's going to happen even faster. Oh, pastor, you're not on the internet anymore. They finally caught you. They kicked you out online. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. The Lord's going to resurrect. Amen. By the way, let me tell you something. As the church gets trampled down by so many things of the world, the flesh, and the devil, it's creating an increasing power within as well. Didn't you know that? It's not just bringing the resurrection, the rapture closer. It's even bringing your own spiritual life, the resurrection, even stronger. You might say, how so, Pastor? Because let's say that we had, let's say, 30 people going out soul winning. That's why you don't attend soul winning anymore. Because so-and-so will take care of the job for you. But let's say the church is dying out, and then you're like, man, I got to go help out Pastor because he's going to be the only one soul winning. See, your spiritual life, your resurrection finally increased a bit. Amen. So... Uh, if we don't have enough volunteers to helping out the stuff, that means the same Christian is doing 10 jobs for them. So your spiritual resurrection increased tenfold more. See that? Praise the Lord. How about that? Pastor, do you know, how did your preaching get better? How did your teaching get better? You want me to tell you how? I'll tell you how. You know how I was able to teach like this, preach like this? It's because when the things in the church God has given to me was dying out more and more. Yeah. Because I kept thinking like, okay, what was it that I preached that did not convict or help the person? What was it that I did that did not minister to the brother and sister? What was it that I taught that made the person say, 
well, he's too shallow, narrow-minded, bigoted. I'm not convinced. What can I do to teach that will convince them even more? That's why I was able to teach and preach like this. You know why? It increased my spiritual resurrection tenfold more when things in the church start to die out. How about that? So here's the thing, friend, is that don't be discouraged. Don't be depressed when the things of this church start to die out. Even Bible-believing churches die out. That's actually good. That means more work for you, Amen. more spiritual increase for you. These churches are not doing their soul winning, pastor. Good, then that means you're just going to have to do 10 times the work on soul winning. Amen. You know, uh, remember at the beginning at this community, we got like hundreds of souls saved. You know why? Because churches were dying. That's why. They weren't doing their job. So they just gave us all the fruit and people were just so hungry that we just got them for them. Yes, sir. How about that? See? How about that? Did you, did you ever wonder why people start to get an increase for... Bible-believing truth. You got to realize this. Ten years ago, I didn't have those kind of people. There weren't people that hungry until ten years ago when online people start to get more hungry. You know why? Because churches were dying. Churches were dying, so they were hungry for truth. And out of all the churches they could have gone to or saw, they found us. How about that? That's why praise the Lord, let the churches die out. That means more people for us. Amen. That means more fruit for us, more blessings for us more subscribers on YouTube for us. Let all the YouTube channels be apostate. I'm not gonna be popular then. Let them all be apostate so our channel can grow more. See that? So let the churches die out because that means more resurrection for this church. More resurrection for you more importantly. So keep laboring for God. Be assimilated with Jesus Christ, our Passover lamb. Will you take up your cross and follow him? What are you messing around with with your sin, huh? What sin is it that you're still gambling? You can't just say, well, I'm soul winning. I'm serving God in church. I pray daily. No, no, no. What sin are you messing around with still? You got to kill that. You can't serve God while messing around with sin. You know what you need to do? That sin must die if you want God to resurrect your finances. If you want God to resurrect your family. If you want God to resurrect... Uh, the prayer requests that have been shallow and no answers yet. If you want God to resurrect your fruits. Pastor, I've been patient. I've been waiting on the Lord. Nope. Resurrection can only occur when something in you dies. There's something in your life, friend. I can feel it. There's something here that you're still stubbornly clinging on to. And you refuse to sacrifice it on the altar. What sin is it that you're messing around? Not just sin, but also your flesh. What are the things of the flesh and of this world that you're still stubbornly clinging on to? Is it your job? Is it your family? Is it your money? Is it your house? Is it your financial security? What is it? You got to give that up to Jesus Christ. You got to kill that. Nail it to the cross and say, God, I want you to resurrect my life for me. So I finally give up myself. You gotta give up Gene Kim, friend. It's not just sin, you also gotta give up yourself. I have to give up Gene Kim, everything that I desire, everything that I want, and be willing to go through the suffering, go through the pain, go through the discouragement, go through sacrifice, and nail it to the cross so that I can be resurrected. You also gotta realize this, this world must be crucified. This wicked world has to be nailed to the cross. When the, wor when the environment is getting worse and worse, the government's becoming worse and worse, and then schools are becoming worse and worse, praise the Lord. Let all those things be nailed to the cross because the resurrection is coming even closer. Amen. My fellow Christians, Pastor, are failing out on me. It's so hard. I'm doing all the work myself. Good. Those things must also be killed as well so that you can attain more resurrection, more life within you. Do you know why this church, despite of its small size and despite of being in an expensive area and despite of being in a very wicked and liberal area, San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley, how did God bless us with so much fruit? Think about all the costs that people went through. Think about all the things that the people in this church were willing to kill and to die. 
But you know what you're doing? You're going back to the grave and you're digging up the garbage and taking out the remains that you killed and keeping them again. Whether it be sin, whether it be things of yourself, whether it be the world, you're just trying to get back the dead things again. No, let it die. Let it stay in the grave. Some of you just went back to the grave, didn't you? No. Dig another hole and bury it there and walk away from it. Get resurrected in Jesus Christ. Some of you are probably not even saved. I want to ask you this question. If you were to die today, be honest. Please be very honest when you answer this question. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure you can go to heaven? Are you 100% sure? You might say, man, I'm not sure, Pastor. My friend, right now, you're a walking dead man. Didn't you know that? And you're going to face a second death, which is hell. And you're trying to find life in the dead things of this world. That's why you go work in a job. You go to school. You raise a family. You try to set up things in your goals and futures. You want to travel around the world. You know why? You're collecting all the dead things of this world to satisfy yourself. But death cannot bring you life. It can only bring you death. Let the dead bury the dead, as Jesus said. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, as the Bible says? If you're not sure that you can go to heaven when you die, you know how you go to heaven? It's not by going to church. It's not by getting baptized. It's not by being a good Christian. It's not by being a faithful member in Pastor Kim's church and being his right-hand man. No, you can be a right-hand man and go to hell. No, I don't believe that, Pastor. Judas went to hell. One of, the, one of the 12 of Jesus Christ, he was a church treasurer, man. He was a church treasurer. He went to hell. Right-hand man, man. So the thing is this, is that you got to realize this. Whatever you do can never save your soul. All you can do is this. God, I know I'm a sinner and my, because of my sin, I'm going to burn in hell. So all I can do is I repent as a sinner. I only trust what you did on the cross to save me. Right. Yeah. Remember, why did Jesus die for you? For forgiveness, to save me. Save me from my sins. Yeah, did you understood what you just said now? You didn't really understood that, did you, before? He died to give you salvation, to give you forgiveness, to give you eternal life, to get you to heaven. So that's all it takes is him dying on the cross. That's all it takes. So all you have to do is when you repent as a sinner, I just trust in that. I believe in that. That's it. It's not coming to this church. It's not cleaning up your life, doing good things. It's just that. Happy Resurrection Day for some of you who are dead in sin. Today would be a great day to receive the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. Some of you need to come down to this tomb over here. Some of you need to go on this altar and crucify and nail the things of this world, the flesh. You need to nail it right here. Why don't you nail it here on Golgotha's hill? Why don't you nail it here on the tomb? Why don't you walk away out of here buried? Bury it down the ground. Bury it right here, your sin. Bury yourself here. Bury what you're struggling with right here and walk away resurrected. Some of you who are not sure that you're saved, are you 100% sure you can go to heaven after you die? You might say, Pastor, I don't know. Well, why not get saved right now? Again, all you have to do is say to God, just say to him, God, I repent as a sinner. I'll only trust what you did on the cross to save me. That's all you have to say. You might say, well, Pastor, I don't know how to say it to God. Could you help me out? Sure, I can help you out. I'll give you the words on how to say it to God. You just simply repeat after me. But remember this, repeating a prayer can never save you. Repeating the words after me cannot save you. You got to believe all the words with all your heart. You got to believe as if they are your own words, you're saying it to God. You want to get saved right now? Yeah, pastor, I want to get saved right now. Okay, let's do it. I'll, I'll give you the words you can repeat after me. You don't have to say it out loud. You can say it silently, okay? You don't even have to say it out loud if you're embarrassed. 
Every head is bowed, every eye is shut. No one knows who you are. I'm not going to point you out, okay? You want to get saved right now? Let's do it. Repeat after me. Dear God, I repent as a sinner. I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sin. I'm only trusting what you did on the cross to save me. Not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, please keep your heads bowed and eyes shut. The altar call is still open. Don't feel like you have to rush. You can take your time. With every head bowed and every eye shut, no one looking around. If you would please bow your head and close your eyes without looking around, please. This is out of respect for the person sitting next to you. If you just repeated those words after me, could you just slip up your hand real quick? I'm not going to point out who you are. Every head is bowed and every eye is shut. No one knows who you are. I'm not going to point you out. Could you slip up your hand right now, please? Just slip up your hand real quick right now. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your honesty. Okay, so let's close with a word of prayer. Thank you for your honesty. God, my Father, I want to pray that you'll please help these people, Lord. They, they've killed themselves today, Lord. And they buried themselves on the ground. And they walked away brand new. They're not looking back, Lord. And I pray that they will keep retaining the new man within them, the new nature within them, and not return to the ways of the old man. The old man is dead, Lord. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that with this resurrected life, that you'll start to finally resurrect their problems that they're struggling with. Resurrect the temptations that they're trying to conquer. Resurrect their own life issues that they're struggling with. Finally resurrect it for them, Lord. Work in their lives mightily. And for the people who have just gotten saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, they receive the greatest resurrection of all, and we'll all be resurrected together with them at the rapture and see each other in heaven. Dismiss us now with your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that He can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what He did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, Pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, 